Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX plans manned circumlunar launch in 2018. Gulfstream flies second G600 test aircraft. Marine missing from Vietnam War identified. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's March 1st and this is Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX had a surprising announcement this week signaling that private space tourism may be making some big leaps soon. The company announced that it had been approached to fly two private citizens on a trip around the moon late next year. They have already paid a significant deposit to do a moon mission. SpaceX adds, we expect to conduct health and fitness tests as well as beginning initial training later this year. Other flight teams have also expressed strong interest and we expect more to follow. Additional information will be released about the flight teams contingent upon their approval and confirmation of their health and fitness test results. The effort will involve the SpaceX Dragon man-carrying spacecraft, the new Falcon Heavy launch vehicle, while the flight will be completely automatic. After final tests, SpaceX will launch the journey circumnavigating the moon and returning to Earth. Liftoff will be from Kennedy Space Center's historic pad 39A, the same launch pad used by Apollo. SpaceX notes that this presents an opportunity for humans to return to deep space for the first time in 45 years, and they will travel faster and further into the solar system than any before them. Gulfstream keeps pushing the envelope. The second Gulfstream G600 has completed its first flight spending four hours and 26 minutes in the air and officially joining the flight test campaign. Mark Burns, president of Gulfstream, said, quote, The addition of a second flight test aircraft just 10 weeks after the first demonstrates the rigor and discipline inherent in our development programs and continues a cadence of accomplishments that will steadily move the G600 towards certification and entry into service. Each milestone we clear validates the significant investment we've made in research and development. Our ground-based labs and our flight test capabilities allowing us to deliver on the promises we've made to our customers. The first G600 flight test aircraft flew for the first time December 17, 2016, and has already achieved more than 150 flight hours to include flying 22 consecutive sorties without a single maintenance discrepancy. That aircraft is conducting flutter testing and expanding the flight envelope, while the second G600 will soon begin flight loads testing. Additionally, Gulfstream recently completed ultimate load testing of the G600, structural test article a key step in the certification process. Gulfstream anticipates receiving type certification for the G600 from the FAA in 2018, with customers' deliveries scheduled for later the same year. After the break, yet another hero from Vietnam War is returned home. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news at spy at aero-news.net. Marine Corps Reserve First Lieutenant William C. Ryan, missing from the Vietnam War, has now been accounted for. On May 11, 1969, Ryan was the radar intercept officer of an F-4B aircraft for the Marine Fighter Attack Force 115, Marine Aircraft Group 13, 1st Marine Aircraft Wing, Fleet Marine Force Pacific, and an on-combat mission over Laos. While pulling out of a bombing pass, the aircraft was hit by enemy fire. 
The pilot lost control and called several times for his radar officer to eject without response. The pilot ejected before the aircraft crashed, and other members of the flight only witnessed one parachute leaving the aircraft. The location of the crash site precluded a search and recovery effort, but the pilot was rescued. Ryan was declared deceased in 1969. From January 1990 until May 2012, joint teams with the U.S. Laos People Democratic Republic and the Vietnamese Office for Research and Investigative Teams gathered information regarding where Ryan may have died. From May 2012 until January 2016, joint teams conducted six excavations of a crash site near Bangalang Noi, recovering life support items, aircraft wreckage, and possible human remains. On February 17, 2016, the remains were sent to a laboratory for analysis, and Ryan was ID'd. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. We're here in Orlando with our new, brand new mobile marketing experience. It's our way of sort of bringing EAA and Oshkosh and AirVenture on the road and introduce aviation and grassroots aviation to people all over the country. While at NBAA Base 2016, ANN news editor Tom Patton picked up an assignment that looked like a lot of fun. He had the opportunity to check out EAA's new Spirit of Aviation mobile experience that is not only fun, but also highly informative. Search EAA AirVenture on the road mobile Oshkosh experience on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Garmin's aviation systems engineering team suffers a tragedy. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call around the patch. A man who allegedly shot two Garmin employees, killing one late Wednesday night, has been charged with first-degree murder in Kansas. The alleged shooter, identified as 51-year-old Adam W. Puritan, allegedly shot and killed a 32-year-old Shravanas Kuchabutla and injured Alok Madasani, 32 who were part of the Garmin Aviation Systems engineering team. A thief stole drone gear from the multi-copter warehouse in Lone Tree, Colorado Sunday, making off with thousands of dollars in equipment. The thief stole two specialized drone cameras and a battery. The store noticed the equipment was missing at about 12.50 local time Sunday and caught the theft on surveillance video. The UK's Sheffield City region is set to partner with the world's largest aerospace company, Boeing, in a multi-million pound investment. On Friday, Boeing announced that subject to planning permission, it would build its first factory in Europe alongside the University of Sheffield's Advanced Manufacturing Center. The Atherton, California City Council has given initial approval to an ordinance that severely limits how drones can be operated in the city. The council mainly used a privacy argument to make his case, stating that drones cannot be operated in a manner that violates an individual's reasonable expectation of privacy. After more than three and a half years of UPS allegedly refusing to agree to a contract with aircraft mechanics and related classifications, the mechanics have requested that the National Mediation Board release them from mediated negotiations with the company. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Drone paranoia seems out of control these days, 
especially when an unfortunate accident gets turned into a criminal case with jail time. Seattle court judge and apparent technophobe Willie Gregory has sentenced the owner of an aerial photography company to 30 days in jail for losing control of his drone at the Gay Pride Parade in 2015, which injured two people. Judge Gregory told the defendant Paul M. Skinner that he recognized the incident that injured the parade goers was an accident, but claimed that Skinner had, quote, engaged in conduct that put people in danger of being injured, which is what happened. City attorney Pete Holmes, who has sought 90 days of jail time, said he views the faulty operation of drones as a serious public safety issue that will only get worse. In representing Holmes before Judge Gregory, Assistant City Prosecutor Raymond Lee said Seattle residents should not fear a drone strike falling from the sky and noted that the defendant created the situation that caused the harm. Skinner's attorney said he will appeal the verdict. While it is pending, Skinner will not have to serve the 30 days in jail. However, he will have to meet the other conditions imposed by the court. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.